Hello. Welcome to Sunday Bible Study Hour. I am not Joel McGarvey, your host. I am Matthew Ritchie, your host. Uh, I don't know what I'm hosting, but anyway, I'm your guy today. Uh, and uh, so if you're just finding us for the first time, or maybe the other times you ha- weren't paying attention at the beginning, uh, I'm just going to remind you of some of the things that Bible Doctrines to Live By does. Uh, and so uh, there on the screen, you can see some of our publishing stuff that we have available. We do have a plethora of Bible study materials. Uh, we certainly have gospel tracks, uh, as well as tracks on different uh, uh, other subjects. Uh, and we have curriculum, graded curriculum. What that means is we have it for different age levels. Uh, And so there's that available for your churches, uh, for your Bible study groups, and um, and yes, for personal growth. And uh, just to give you our information, uh, there is our phone number. Please no prank calls, 616-785-3618. Write that down, 616-785-3618. If you're more of uh, the tech person, uh, you can email us at staff at BibleDoctrines.org. And of course, uh, we have uh, resources available on our website. It's not too difficult to remember. BibleDoctrines.org. And uh, if it's not up yet, we, uh, we should be having a page for kids where there's links to, um, to the different uh, Truth for Youth that appear in our uh, what is it called, uh, Truth of Flame magazine, uh, as well as the videos that we have, such as Miss Susan's Bible Buddies uh, and uh, others, and uh, some follow-up lessons. So um, there's that. There's a store there where you can see our curriculum and our studies and our tracks, and uh, there's videos. Uh, these studies like this are archived there. Uh, there's audio uh, from uh, especially Lee Hamoki. Uh, and just some information to get you to help you understand uh, Bible doctrines to live by a little bit better. Uh, we also have uh, different programs that we do. This is one of them. Uh, our Sunday Bible Hour, uh, five o'clock every Sunday on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we also have a Tuesday night study at seven o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, every morning on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so not every morning, four mornings out of the week, we have a morning coffee with a bite of scripture, which is just a little bite of scripture, a little devotional, and a time of prayer. And uh, many people enjoy that. And uh, I think there's two more uh, Miss Susan Bible Buddies uh, that uh, are available for this season. Uh, and so be looking for those on uh, every other Monday at 6, maybe it's 4 o'clock. They get released uh, on YouTube and Facebook. But you can watch episodes that have already released uh, if you go to YouTube and search root, uh, BDTLB Rooted, R-O-O-T-E-D. So uh, that's my spiel uh, as far as a little bit about what Bible Doctrines does. Uh, so we're going to get into our study and turn to Romans chapter 13 this evening. Uh, and of course, some of the other things that we do are uh, usually, uh, Joel McGarvey is sitting behind the desk on Sunday evenings, uh, but he is, a, a, he is at a conference this week, and so we do uh, travel for conferences, uh, and pretty soon the summer ministry will be starting, uh, if, it ev- if summer ever arrives, uh, or summer weather anyway, uh, and uh, so Joel and Susan and uh, this year, Paul and Rebecca Turner, who will be taking over the summer ministries, they are going out and having Bible conferences this summer, as well as family Bible schools. And they call them family Bible schools because they're not just for youngins, uh, but there is a, time, a class time for the oldens. Uh, so, uh, so keep that in mind. And uh, on our website, there's another plug, BibleDoctrines.org. Pretty soon their itinerary will be up there, so you'll be able to see whether they're going to be in your area or not. Uh, So Romans chapter 13, we're going to spend some time there this evening. Um, And of course, this is everybody's, the first few verses are everybody's favorite chapter. Uh, And uh, people have all sorts of excuses why, well, this doesn't really mean this, but this. And um, 
That's great. Sometimes we just need to let the Word of God say what it says and be willing to obey it. Um, But uh, we're not going to focus on all of that. We are going to focus on verses 8 through 10. All right? So let's read. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. It says, O no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. So before I do any discussion about this passage, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, God and Father, I do thank you for this time that we have together on this Sunday evening, uh, and just pray that uh, your word speaks, uh, that uh, we allow it to to say what you intended intended it to say, Uh, that we wouldn't add our input, um, that we wouldn't say, well, I believe, but uh, we would be more inclined to thus saith the Lord. Uh, And so I just pray that, uh, yeah, you work on our minds, help us to understand and grow in that way, but also our hearts and our will uh, today, Father, that we are fully prepared uh, to allow the Holy Spirit uh, to to make us more like you uh, this evening uh, and be willing to do what you have called us to do. I pray all these things, of course, to the glory of God, because he's the only one that can do this work in us and through us. And so I pray it, and I, I, I lift this time up before our wonderful Savior, and it's in his name that I pray, amen. All right, well, I will just say once again, thank you for joining us if uh, you've uh, entered late. Um, but uh, we are in Romans chapter 13, and I read verses 8, 9, and 10. And uh, really, this is a, a one another passage. It speaks of what God desires of us toward one another, uh, and the love that we should have. Uh, and really, the, the main point of this passage is that we have an obligation uh, of love for the other. Uh, and that's really the point of this, this paragraph. Uh, as, it, as it mentioned, the government um, uh, at the beginning of chapter 13, and just like that government has laws... Uh, Paul, or the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to now write about the divine law. Uh, And divine law is ultimately fulfilled through loving one another. And we'll we'll develop that as we we go on here. Um, It says in in verse 8, obviously I'm I'm, going to read it again. It says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, uh, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Um, If someone deserves, uh, uh, back in verse 7, it said, if someone deserves honor, give them honor, honor them. Uh, If it said, if you owe tax, pay the tax. Uh, And uh, and then he presents uh, an imperative, which is a command, a do this uh, with a negative. Uh, So he had the positives, if you do this, do this. If you do this, do this, or if you owe this, do this. And then there's a negative in verse 8 where he says, don't. He says, stop owing to anyone even one thing. And here's what that means. Pay your debts. It's that simple. Uh, If you are indebted to someone or some corporation, uh, get out of that debt. Pay what is, is owed. Uh, and, I, you know, I've heard people use this verse to say don't, don't take out a loan, don't take out a mortgage, don't borrow milk from your neighbor. or what I don't know, but that's not, what, that's not the point of this. Uh, what it is telling us is to repay any debts that we have promptly and uh, in accordance with the terms of the contract. Uh, so if you agree to take out a certain amount, um, well, pay that according to the schedule. Um, you know, if you borrowed milk from your neighbor, I remember those days you knock here, knock on the door. Yes. Could I borrow a cup of sugar? Grandma's making pancakes or whatever. Um, 
and uh, the expectation was you would give her a cup of sugar back, do so. Uh, and, it, and it really talks about debt um, and, uh, and paying debt promptly. Um, and, you know, this, this, there's ties to this in the Mosaic Law as well. Uh, you know, you borrow a coat, give it back, and, and all of these things. But uh, that's what the Lord desires, uh, that, uh, that people not have to chase after us to get what is owed to them. Um, there is one thing that others are owed there. Or there is one thing that it, that it mentions or is owed to others, and that is to love one another. So in other words, don't owe anyone anything except love. Uh, and really, um, Origen, he explained it uh, this way. Let the only debt that is unpa- unpaid be that of love. A debt which you should always be attempting to discharge in full, but will never succeed in discharging. And I like the way he said that. Uh, because what? Because if you took out a loan for 10 bucks, why you do that, I don't know. But if you did that, um, that's what you owe plus the interest that you agreed upon. That's, that's the amount. And once that amount is paid... It's done. It's over with. All right? But there isn't a certain amount of love we're called to. In other words, uh, Sammy Quitano, if Sammy Quitano is watching today, I'm sorry, but uh, I didn't mean to purposely call you out. But Sammy Quitano uh, over there, I have loved him for, for a year now. Uh, and I've done this and this and this and this and this for him. I've done enough. I've done enough loving, I've, I've shown enough love to Sammy Quintano. Uh, you're never going to get to a point where you can say, I'm, I've, I've, I've given Sammy the love I've owed. Because the love that we're to give isn't based upon the love that Sammy gave to us. It's based upon the love of God. A love that was demonstrated to us while we were yet sinners. A love that we can never repay. Uh, And in in return, what God asks of us is, do what I've always desired, and that is to love one another. So, um, the debt of love we we are always going to owe because it is an unlimited debt. It can never be repaid. Uh, You will never have reached... Uh, the end of love. It's not an accurate statement to say, I've loved enough today. Now, I hope I'm not putting you in the, in the wrong mindset. Um, because religion, what religion will do is it will say, this is what Christ has done for you, and you need to pay him back. And so you need to tithe. You need to be baptized. You need to uh, uh, do more tithing. Uh, you need to, to go through these classes. You need to help old ladies cross the street. Uh, you need to volunteer at the soup kitchen. You need to do this and this and this to pay God back. Here's the thing. You're never going to do that. What is being expressed here is that God has loved you in a way that you are never going to pay back And uh, as Romans 12 put it, it's reasonable for him to ask you to serve others by loving them. We should be in a place, when we understand, as Paul prayed the Ephesian saints, the length, the breadth, the depth, and height of the love of Christ. And when we understand the magnitude and the magnificence, I mean, it's so magnificent it doesn't even fit on the screen, um, of that love, the response isn't, Oh, I got to pay it back. It's I could never pay it back. Thank you for paying the price for me, and in return, out of gratefulness, I'm going to take that divine love, love, the 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 love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, as Romans uh, five tells us, and I am going to reach out in love for other toward others. It says here in verse eight. Love one another. Now, uh, certainly, uh, this has a uh, 
in the ultimate view, in the, in the direct view, would be the, the believer, those who are members of the church, the body uh, of Christ. Uh, but it's not limited to that. All right? It doesn't mean that if they don't go to your church, uh, you don't have to love them. But that's, all the, that's the ultimate view here. Uh, and I point that out because sometimes we don't act in love toward one another in, in, within the church. Uh, we, we would rather argue over what plants uh, we are going to have. Uh, I want, I want uh, geraniums. No, I want a Venus flytrap. You know, those types of things um, rather than, than love. Uh, but e- just because the focus and, and really the context is the church, the one another, uh, doesn't mean that we shouldn't love, uh, love those outside of the church. However, um, we should love even if it's not returned. Although the, uh, the, the imperative here is re- reciprocal. It means love one another means he or she loves you and you, are, you, you love he or she. Uh, and so the church, there should be this, this love bouncing off uh, everyone. Um, and the church should be characterized by love. Um, now, don't limit the word love like the world does and think it's, you know, lust and, and eros and all that, uh, and kisses and all of that. Um, love is a, is a motivator. It's a, it's a why, um, uh, a reason why we do what, what we do. Uh, the second part of verse 8 says, For the one that loves hath fulfilled the law. So first of all, we need to, to keep in mind, I didn't read it, but verses uh, or uh, Romans 8, 1 through 4. Um, and, and you just look back there and, and glance over those verses as I'm speaking. Um, if, you know what, I'm going to read them. Why not? All right. Uh, Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore, there is... There, okay, let me read it the correct way. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. All right? Romans 8, 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, so that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Man, this is another sermon. Um, So I have to rein myself in, narrow myself in, and say, don't go off on another sermon. You're already doing a sermon. But uh, in Romans chapter 8, what, what, uh, what a, a vast amount of information regarding the reality of who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, first of all, uh, Romans 6 has already told us, and in Romans 7, that we are not to live according to the flesh any longer. We are not to let sin boss us around any longer because we have the Holy Spirit uh, and uh, we are free from the law of sin and death. And so we are called then, uh, and and then verse 3 of of Romans 8 here reminds us for what the law could not do. And that's talking about the Mosaic law. Uh, The problem, Paul says in Romans 7, was not the Mosaic law, was not the law delivered on Sinai. The law was holy and just and good. The problem was with you and me, all right, all of us. It was, it was with humanity that the flesh was weak. It could not ever attain, I'm going to sneeze here, to the level of righteousness that God requires. Now, it could keep someone in a covenant. That's what, that's what Israel was to do. But it couldn't get them to a place where God could say, oh, you deserve my righteousness. That took Jesus Christ. Uh, And we know under grace, the law has been fully taken out of the way today. Uh, And yet Paul reminds them, if, if if the flesh could not keep God's 
desires under the law, we need to not try to please God in the flesh today in grace. Uh, if we want to keep the, if we want to fulfill the heart of the law, we walk in the Spirit. And so, uh, if uh, if walking in the in the Spirit fulfills the law, and if, as Romans uh, thirteen eight says, if love fulfills the law, then that would lead me to conclude that if you're walking in the Spirit, you will be loving. All right, you follow me? If uh, Romans 8, 4 says walking in the Spirit fulfills the law, and Romans 13, 8b says love fulfill, loving one another fulfills the law, then if you're walking in the Spirit, you will be loving one another. And so if you are in church on Sunday and you act in an unloving manner, Guess what, is bo- guess what is controlling you? Not the spirit, but the flesh. Uh, if you uh, are more concerned with, if you're consumed with criticizing the behavior of the unbeliever rather than sharing the love of Christ with them, once again, maybe we need to take some, some in- inventory of what is really controlling us. And so, coming back to Romans 13.8 and focusing your attention uh, here, uh, for the, the one loving the other has fulfilled the law, is what it says. Now, the word fulfilled in Romans 13.8 is he has accomplished it. He has executed it. He has completed it. I think it's very important that Paul does not say he has obeyed it, because under grace, we are not called to obey the Mosaic law. But we would agree, I hope you would agree, that there are some good things in the Mosaic Law. There, as mentioned in verse 9 that we're going to get to in a moment. Um, and so if, if God delivered to Israel his righteous standard in the Mosaic Law, uh, and we know under grace we're not called to obey it or to keep it, but those righteous things and just things under the law, they are executed when we allow the Holy Spirit to bring us to a point where we are loving one another. And so love has executed the righteousness of the law. Uh, And really, the focus of the Mosaic law really always has been to benefit others, to get the the humanity and the flesh, uh, they are the things that want to... to put the focus on me, 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 uh, whereas God's rule uh, focuses on him, just like you see in the Ten Commandments, and to outward towards others, just like you see in the Ten Commandments and the other 600 and so commandments. Um, and even in the, the Gospels, I'm just kind of glancing down here. Yeah, I think we're going to look at that uh, in a moment, so shh, I won't talk about it now. But uh, even the Gospels um, denote this. But we'll look at that in a moment. For right now, verse 8, Owe no man anything. Pay your debts, except to love one another. That's what we are indebted to do. That's what God has indebted us to do, to love one another. Uh, Because the one that loves the other has executed what God always desired in the law. All right? So uh, let's move on here. And uh, just glance down at uh, verse 9 and, uh, and remind yourself what it says there. It lists some of those, what we call the Ten Commandments. Uh, don't commit adultery, don't kill, don't steal, don't bear false witness, don't covet. All right? And here's the thing. If you are allowing the Holy, if you are yielded to the Holy Spirit, and He is bearing the fruit of love in your life, um, you are going to execute the law. Here's what I mean by that. If you love your best friend, you are not going to sleep with his wife or her husband if you truly love them. Am I correct? Therefore, you're executing when the law, you are are accomplishing when the law said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, Here's the other one. If you love someone, you are not going to murder them. 
I mean, it seems obvious. Uh, you are not going to stab them in the back, literally or figuratively, when you are, you are extending love toward the other. Uh, therefore, you are executing the law, uh, the thou shalt not kill standard when you are loving. Uh, if you love someone, you are not going to steal from them. You're not going to pilfer in, uh, from them. Uh, you are not going to take their possessions. Oh, that's a nice TV. It'd look good in my room, wouldn't it? Yeah, grab it. Throw it in the back seat of the car. You're not going to do that if you love someone. Or their ideas. You're going to give them credit where credit is due, just like uh, Romans 13, 7 says. So if you love someone, you are going to execute the part of the law that says, don't steal. Thou shalt not steal. Uh, if you love someone, you are not going to slander them in gospel or gospel. Yeah, you will share the gospel with them, but uh, you won't gossip about them or you won't testify falsely against them. All right? You're not going to lie about them to get them in trouble or, or to slander them, to, to drag their name through the mud if you love someone. And so, what have you done? Well, the law said, don't bear false witness. And by loving that other person, you have actually accomplished what the law stated. Uh, if you love someone, you are not going to envy their things. You're not going to be jealous uh, about what they have or what they've attained to. You're not going to be uh, unhappy about what they have and you don't. All right, You are going to be happy for them if you are yielded to the Holy Spirit He's producing love in your life. You are not going to covet. Therefore, you are executing the law that says, Thou shalt not covet. And then uh, verse 9 says, And any other commandment of a different, of a, of a different uh, or of a different nature, of a different kind. All right? Uh, well, what other commandments? Well, uh, I guess I could give you a few examples. Uh, if you love someone and they fall into a ditch, you will help them up. Yeah, maybe you're laughing at each other. Ha, 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 that was hilarious. Uh, hopefully their leg's not dangling off to the side while you're laughing at them. But, but that's the essence of this. If there's any other commandment of a, of a different nature. Um, so if they fall into the ditch, you help pick them up. If they fall into the lake, you hook them out or whatever. Um, and so Paul... What he does, you know, let me say it, uh, he broadens it from the Mosaic Law. Uh, let, me, let me share something with you. You know, the law had tithes, a certain amount to give. Uh, and, you know, we turn to, to first, er, first or second, uh, Corinthians uh, 8 and 9, and we see, you know, whatever a man purposes in our heart. But it's been said that, no, we're not held to 10%. Or no, we don't have to give 10% today in, under grace, but we're also not limited to 10%. And so grace has broadened this up, uh, not just to say you don't have to do A, B, and C anymore, but also to perhaps say you, you can do A, B, and C and beyond. You're not limited to just A, B, and C. And so here, uh, you know, it's not just what Paul does is he says you're not just limited to adultery, uh, killing, stealing, uh, bearing false witness, and coveting. It actually you now can do beyond that. You can do much more than that. Uh, he opens it up to culturally accepted laws, as we'll see in, and uh, or, or we're not going to see, but as you can see in Romans chapter 15. Uh, because the rule is not what can I get away with. Um, it is, how can I love that person enough to help them and put them first? Because I want to see them grow in the Lord, not, I well, my rights. No, it's all about that person growing in the Lord. And so, I'll tell you, uh, God is wise, and I, I love the way Romans is laid out here. Just, it, anyway, that's a story for another day. Um, so, he lists some things from the Mosaic Law, and he broadens it. Uh, if anything else uh, that falls under this category, or perhaps doesn't, it's still we're called to love one another. So um, I guess it takes away the excuse that, uh, that well, uh, I would do this for them, 
but uh, it doesn't fall under not committing adultery and not killing and not playing with false witness. Or No, love. That's what we're called to towards one another. Uh, he says, at least in the King James, verse 9, briefly compre- comprehended, or it is summarized in this saying. It is summarized by this word. Okay? And the word, the way to summarize it is, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, these words, or this summary, is also found in the Old Testament. In Leviticus 19.18, it says this, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. See? That whole, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, it wasn't just a New Testament thing. It wasn't just a kingdom gospel thing. Paul states it. Uh, The Mosaic Law stated it. Now, while in Leviticus, uh, as we rightly divide the word of truth, we recognize it talks about the neighbor, thou shalt love thy neighbor, that was the fellow Jew. That was who their neighbors were. Uh, But there's no limitation here uh, in Romans. All right. Uh, Although the focus is on uh, the church, the body of Christ, it's not limited to that. Deuteronomy 6.5, which is also in the Old Testament. It says this, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Love is not just a New Testament concept. It was a desire under the law. Love was something that those teaching the Old Testament uh, as Jesus was on earth, they missed that. They missed that it was less about checking off the checklist than it was having a new heart, having the proper motivation to understanding that, like I already mentioned, if you truly love that person, you're not going to kill them, all right? Love would take care of that. Um, And uh, so love is not just a New Testament concept um, because the heart of the Mosaic Law always was love. Um, turn to, very quickly, uh, Matthew chapter 22. There's several verses I'm going to read here. We're going to come back to Romans 13, so keep a, keep a marker there, um, a bookmark. But uh, turn to Matthew chapter 22 for a moment. Matthew chapter 22. You there yet? You there yet? I'm going to be like my kids. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are you there yet? Are you there yet? Are you there yet? Romans chapter 22. I'm there. Uh, I'm going to read uh, verses 34 through 40. You ready? You ready? You there yet? All right. Romans chapter 22, verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, I love that. Uh, The Sadducees came to him, tried to trip him up, and uh, Jesus gave him the perfect answer. And they were like, "Uh, uh." they didn't have any response. When the Pharisees heard that, you know, they thought, ah. Well, they couldn't do it, but we can. Uh, So they gathered themselves together. Verse 35. One of them, which was a lawyer, so he was very proficient in the Mosaic law, he asked Jesus a question, testing him. And he said, Master, I'm going to get him, guys. I'm going to get him. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And that's the first and greatest commandment. And the second is similar to it, that thou shalt love thy neighbor of thyself. Of thee, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so everything that the Mosaic law said, everything the prophetical scripture said, they hung on those two truths. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. They all hang on that. Um, and then Jesus had a question for, for them. Uh, but uh, in verse 46, no man was able to answer them. So the Sadducees left like, um, the Pharisees were left like, um, all right. So uh, Jesus is still undefeated uh, when it comes to um, difficult questions. But focusing in on Matthew chapter 22 and Jesus' response, 
the heart of the law always was, and, and, and again, this is not, it's not, it's not a New Testament concept. Jesus is quoting the Old Testament. He's quoting Leviticus 19.18. He's quoting Deuteronomy 6.5, and he's telling them the entire law and the prophets were hinged on you keeping these two. Love the Lord your God, because if you love the Lord your God, what are you going to do? You're not going to put other gods before him. You're not going to worship idols. You're not going to do this, that, and the other thing. You are going to put him in the position that he deserves if you truly loved him. And it's the same thing with the neighbor. If you truly loved your neighbor, you are going to have their benefit in mind. You're not going to covet. You're not going to do all those things that I mentioned because you love. And Paul uh, refers back to this horizontal, if you understand that, or transdispensational, if you understand that, or something that was always at the center of all of God's plans, and that is that everything be done in a spirit and with a heart of love. If, if Cain would have truly loved God, he would have brought the appropriate sacrifice. Furthermore, if he would have truly loved his brother, he wouldn't have slayed him in the field. Because it came down to uh, love. Uh, James 2.8, don't turn there, but here's what it says. James 2.8 says, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. Uh, So even post-cross, those kingdom apostles are pointing people back to that statement. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're doing just fine. Because Why? Because it all boils down to that. If you love your neighbor, you are not going to go up and slap them. You're not going to steal their lawnmower. You're not going to do this or that. You're not going to egg their house, all of those things. Uh, I'm back in Romans chapter 13. In the word love there, um, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, the end of verse 9. It is uh, agapo. All right, It uh, uh, it is much love. Now, verse 10 has agape, the unconditional, uh, but uh, agapeo, I guess is how you say it, agapeo, which is much love. Uh, thou, shalt love thou shalt with much love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, Weist defines it this way. It's a divine love, and listen to this, produced by the Holy Spirit, a love self-sacrificial in its essence, giving of itself for the benefit of the person loved. Um, that verifies what I said earlier when I took you back to Romans chapter 8. If, the, if walking in the Spirit fulfills the law and love fulfills the law, then by walking in the Spirit, we will love. And so uh, Weist here acknowledges that when he says this love has to come from the divine. It has to be produced, created from by the Holy Spirit. It is a self-sacrificial love. It is not saying, what am I going to get out of this? Or if I have time, I'll do this. It's, I am all about your betterment, the other's better, betterment, um, and for that person, uh, person's benefit. Um, it sa- when it says, as thyself at the end of verse 9, um, I'm sure all of us, when we're hungry, well, I, I don't know about you, but I know what my kids do. They go out to the cupboard and they scrounge around till they find something half decent to eat. Uh, And uh, we tend to not think much about it. Uh, What I'm saying is we tend to make sure we have food, we have shelter, uh, we we pamper ourselves sometimes. And it's very convicting when we stop for a moment and consider, do we love others as much as we care for ourselves? Or do we only love them how we think they should be loved? Sometimes we love ourselves without even thinking. It happens uh, unconscious. We, we, without thinking of it, we care for ourselves. We pamper ourselves or or whatever. Without a thought, do we love others to that extent? Uh, Mr. Stam said this, 
why does Paul bring the law in? Doesn't Galatians 2.13 declare that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us? Yes, but Romans 8.4 explains that he has done this so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. I've covered that. In Galatians 5.14, again referring to the manward side of the law, the apostle says, All the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's Galatians 5.14. Quotes the same thing. Uh, Thus he concludes in Romans 13.10, Love works no ill toward his neighbor, for love is the fulfilling of the law. While not under the covenant of the law, then, the believer under grace may nevertheless fulfill all the statutes of the law regarding man's behavior to his neighbor by simply letting the love of God motivate him. I'm pausing to let that uh, sink in. You know, the the specific commandments uh, here in, in verse 9 that are listed show the quality of love that is meant to be. It gives some examples to this extent, to this extent, to this extent, to this extent. Um, Love is not simply a warm, mushy feeling. Uh, And we see that as you read through the Old Testament. uh, Paul's letters, the Gospels, uh, non-Pauline epistles, all of that. Uh, It is a decision of the will to do what God desires in regards to others. In other words, God, I really don't want to love them, but your will be done. Holy Spirit, I'm yielding to you. Help me love Sammy, Sammy Quintano. It involves a commitment. It involves an action. Not just feelings of, or intentions or, or an attitude. I mean, how many times have we planned to go visit so-and-so? How many times, I'm including myself in this, how many times have we said, "Ah, I should stop and and get my wife some flowers or something? How many times have we, um, I don't know, we've we've made great plans, we've had the best of intentions, and we didn't follow through? How many times have we expressed love with with our mouth and yet our other actions uh, don't show it. Um, or our attitude, just it certainly is anything but uh, a loving, uh, welcoming uh, attitude. Um, and so while, while the Mosaic Law shows was was kind of a concrete example of what love love was that it doesn't do harm to your neighbor in this way or in this way or in this way or in this way i already mentioned that paul uh, expanded it beyond that because it's not just making sure you don't do this 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 and this it is allowing love to to dictate all the behavior that we have toward others. Not just the way we feel about them, uh, but the way we act and react toward them. Um, and uh, if, I was, uh, if I was being open, I would tell you, um, I don't always do this perfectly. But since I'm not opening, open uh, toward you, I won't tell you that. But uh, if we think we have, um, we have got this love thing down, um, well, then you must be in heaven and have received your perfect body uh, because no one has loved perfectly like the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet we are called to, to love in that extent. Um, and when we understand God did not put barriers on his love, but he loved the world. And he demonstrated that. See, he took action. He didn't just inspire it to be in the Scriptures. He took action when he sent his son uh, to die for his enemies. 
as we come to, as I focus your attention on Romans 13 and, and verse 10. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling of the law. And so love does no wrong to its neighbor. It brings no harm to him. See, it doesn't, it's not destructive. It doesn't tear that, the other down. Instead, it, it builds them up. The word fulfilling is the, uh, the same word, um, where do we have it? Uh, back in oh, verse 8, I believe. Uh, it's the same word. It means uh, completion or uh, repletion. Um, it is, uh, but here, uh, it is, the love is the fulfilling of the law. It is, it is um, uh, it's not ending. It is, it, is, uh, it is, well, it's filling it up. Uh, love is, in, is the perfect expression and fulfillment of what the law aims at, uh, what it points people to, uh, and it's the perfect expression and fulfillment uh, of what God desires of people. Uh, we've kind of come full circle here uh, in that if you love one another, you will not adulterate, steal, lie, cheat, etc., but we haven't perfected love until we've loved like God loved us. Uh, you know, I think of 1 Corinthians 13. Charity never fails. And of the things that remain, love, hope, and charity, the greatest is charity. That's, that's because, and I, I tell people this, uh, uh, faith, hope, and charity. Faith will one day be before us. You know, right now we have faith in Jesus Christ. He's not here. We have to trust him. But one day we'll be face to face. Hope will be one day realized. In other words, what we are guaranteed and look forward to and long for now today, we will one day have it in our direct possession. But charity is eternal. It's forever. And someday we are going to love like God has called us to love now. Uh, but until that day, uh, we recognize the extent of God's love toward us. And it moves our hearts and our will. And we're moved with compassion toward other, to extend the length, the breadth, the depth, the height of that love uh, toward others. And to not just have a few things that we don't do but allow love to just dictate every action and reaction and behavior uh, and realize that this is what God has always desired. That that person in, in, uh, in your local assembly that rubs you the wrong way and you try to avoid, we're called to build them up. To extend and I'm so glad that God didn't love, how should I say this, didn't love some more than others. Because I probably would have been one of the others, not one of the some. But that the vastness of his love applies equally to all. And to even consider what Romans said earlier in Romans chapter 5, um, you know, um, the King James says, for scarcely, for a righteous man will one die. Someone who is upright, uh, good, in, or not, well, good's next, but, but uh, who's upright, it's still, you know, you don't have a whole line of volunteers saying, I'll take his place. Um, it says, perhaps for a good man, some would entertain the idea of dying. But that's not what God did. It's not what Christ did. He didn't say, yep, I'm going to die for the righteous. I'm going to die for the good. Because there, well, Romans 3 already told us there is none righteous. There is none good. He died for sinners. And that is the extent of God's love toward us. And I'll end tonight by asking you, and myself, what is the extent of your love toward 
others. Let's pray. God and Father, thank you for this reminder. Uh, sometimes these, uh, the second half of Paul's books we don't spend as much time in because they are so convicting. We see that, I mean, we, we, we go to the first chapters and we, we puff ourselves up because, yep, I know this. So many people don't know these things. I know these things. And we go to Romans 13 and we see, whoa, I still have, God still has some work to do on me. And so, Father, I just pray. The key is that we recognize it and we allow that work to be done in us. We are assured that one day when we see Jesus Christ, we are going to be like him. But, Father, it should be the desire of our hearts and really the aim of our lives to make it true today. Father, may we recognize and realize the love that we've been called to. And whether it's myself, whether it's the folks watching, that you would be pleased to, that, that you have found us uh, loving one another. And Father, the, the key is to allow that Holy Spirit to do the perfect work that only He can do. So thank you for this time in the book of Romans. Uh, I just pray that these were your words and not mine this evening. Thank you for this opportunity uh, to serve you. In the name of the Savior I serve, Jesus Christ, amen. All right, well, I am going to give you a reminder. Uh, All right, um, if you would like to, to help uh, us uh, with these broadcasts and with our ministries, I did not give you our address before, but there it is now. Uh, Bible Doctrines to Live By, that's who we are. Uh, we get our mail at the post office, box 564. We are located in Comstock Park, Michigan, 49321. So, I uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, I pray that you allow the Word of God uh, to always speak uh, to your hearts and lives, and that uh, we are always allowing the Holy Spirit uh, to make us more and more like our perfect, uh, wonderful uh, Savior that we serve. So, thank you for joining us, and don't forget tomorrow morning at 9.30, you can, you can find the Bible Doctrines Live By Facebook page and uh, spend some time with us in the Scriptures and uh, in prayer. So, uh, thank you for the opportunity, thanks for sticking with me, and uh, we have a great God and Savior. So, thanks. <laughs>